¿Cómo te llamas? Yo, yo me llamo Anthony. Anthony. ¿De dónde, dónde vives, Anthony? De Río Azúcar. ¿Y qué tal la vida? Mm, muy bueno, muy bueno. No es, no es difícil ni fácil, pero hay que luchar. Y pescar y pescar y bueno, trabajar como siempre. En el mar, en la montaña, de todo aquí, hay de todo un poco. Welcome to another update from Elixir's voyage around the world. We've only gone and sailed all the way from the UK to Panama, and this week we're in the Gunayala region, otherwise known as San Blas. Now, this is a very interesting place, as not only is the region completely governed by the indigenous community who live here, but supposedly it's home to 365 different islands. Each one, the archetype of a desert island paradise, with swaying palm trees that hang over pristine white beaches. On board Elixir, we have an interesting English-American mix, a crew of five with an average age of 24. The plan is to spend the next three weeks in paradise, exploring the island chain and enjoying the remoteness. Basically, like I used to date one of Max's like close friends for like two and a half years. And like I was like always in England, like hanging out with him and his friends. Um, and I like actually helped with the boat one day, like we polished this thing, right? It was this thing. Yeah, and that was like all I did. And then yeah, and then we were all just in Bocas at the same time. Bocas is like the crossroads of Central America <laughs> in many ways, in many senses. The town of perpetual heartbreak. Yeah, that's what happened. I like slow, very slowly, like weaseled my way in. It was like premeditated for sure. So far we've seen a, a pretty crazy wreck that used to be the San Blas Ferry. This island. It's got like some boutique little hotel huts on the far side of the island, so it's like a bunch of backpackers and then also some like older guests staying there that I guess are ferried over from the mainland. So it's got like a confusing vibe, it's got like locals but also catering for some tourists coming in. So I'm looking forward to getting further through the train and a bit more remote. Shortly after arriving, our mates Brian, Kaza and Sierra from the Yacht Delos picked us up on their absolute tank of an aluminium dinghy and we went to explore the wreck of the rusting sand glass ferry careened on a patch of flat coral near the entrance of the channel. The vessel was purchased by a wealthy Austrian with the intention of being used as a ferry to transport passengers and cars past the Darien Gap between Panama and Colombia. But despite his $800,000 investment, the Panamanian government refused to give him the necessary permits and instead he decided to use the ship as a ridiculously big liverboard. As well as this ship of 1,300 tons, the guy also had a fleet of smaller catamarans, one of which he ran aground in this exact spot. In an attempt to tow the catamaran from the reef, using the ferry, he managed to run that aground too, and in the end, lost both boats. Without insurance, the wreck of the San Blas ferry will remain here indefinitely. The rusting hull has become part of the landscape, a crowd of reef fish have made a home beneath it, and the upper deck provides sweeping views of the entire archipelago. Here, Emily, I'm in the shot. Oh, fuck, that is beautiful. <laughs> Dude, it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's honestly incredible. Yeah, we needed some American time. Like, there's mm -hmm. a bunch of British people on that boat. Don't put that in, the video. He's gonna put it in. He will? <laughs> yeah. He'll put this in, too. Yeah. So we're gonna sail there today, Likely. potentially. It's on a nice cool show. <laughs> There's like little right now. There's a mixer. There's Delos. We're leaving today. This was our first stop in San Blas, and then now we're going eight miles to sail to a new island. I don't really remember what it's called. Something like. I'll get back to you on the name of that new island. This is the ore that we got in Kunsipin. It's just such a good ore. It works so well. Yeah, it works well. really well. I, I think it's just like carved. I don't know what kind of tree it's carved from, but I don't know, it just works really well. Yeah, hand carved. Hand carved. And then we, we both sit on the paddle board and one of us uses this one. And then one of us, this one, and we're like yeah. fucking flying. Just flying. I mean, yeah. you can see the wind here is super strong. And we're just like on these two little islands. So if we didn't paddle hard enough, we would just go out to sea. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> and send it back. Send it. send it back to Elixir and then go to our beach barbecue. Cut to the barbecue. <laughs> In the afternoon, we sailed eight miles upwind to another anchorage. The wind seemed to consistently blow between 10 and 15 knots. The sun was out and the seas were flat. Suddenly, the struggle of the passage here all became worthwhile. It seemed like a sailing paradise and we couldn't get over the beauty of the perfect little islands. What do you think of this island so far? Oh, it's beautiful, um, really pretty, lots of nature, and it's nice to hear the birds in the morning. They're all around, flying around. It's really pretty. How does it feel to come from England to this? Pretty surreal, especially practicing yoga in such a beautiful environment. It's, yeah, it's pretty nice. The weather's a lot nicer. Scenery, environment, yeah, it's quite surreal. We are racing with Delos and Parlay Revi uh, Revival. Two sailing YouTube channels. We're the ones without buttons and and instruments, sailing instruments and stuff. Everything is manual. Like we crank the winches with, by hand and raise the sails by hand and change the sails by hand. Where as they press buttons, but it's okay. I mean, obviously it's just like, it's just a different kind of sailing, but. <laughs> no hate, no hate. <laughs> it's the last thing I would have expected. All of a sudden we're like sailing with Delos and then they're meeting up to do a collab with another sailing YouTube channel. And like, here we are. It's cool to be like with other people who create videos and like do the same thing. They just definitely do it a lot different than us, but like it's cool because we, you know, you can learn. How's the race going? Not good. We're losing because we're faffing about <laughs> not lifting up the anchor. We decided that we wanted to race way too late and now we're just playing catch up, but it's okay. It's still fun to be sailing and seeing them ahead of us, but my competitive side came out and wanted to win but I think that that I think that that is uh, not an option at this point we were rocked up yesterday and there was like like two drones going by and the boat <laughs> next to us is like non-stop filming everything and I was like well, where are we like who are these people <laughs> but now they look like they're having a good time yeah we're, we might be losing the race but we've definitely got them like outclassed in every other category I reckon like style <laughs> ethics Sunglasses. Sunglasses. Type of boat. And uh, I think we're doing all right, given we've got like 30 year old sails that have like 50 patches in and hand cranking everything. Yeah, you think we can catch them? No. <laughs> Why not? They're like fucking, they're pretty so fucking far. far they just keep getting farther. What was the vibe like at that last anchorage? I mean, it was fun because we got to like see other people. It was just like kind of weird. It was just like a weird ass mix of people. Um, Delos like invited us to this barbecue on the beach and I guess we just assumed that they would have food for us. So we brought like a pineapple and then we get there and there's like no food or like everyone else is just like making their own food. So we're just like sitting there and then we're like debating whether or not to go back to the boat. And then we just stay there and like eat the pineapple. And then we just basically we just eat their fucking scraps like after <laughs> it was, left on the it was so good like we there was like a fish like a fucking like half consumed fish that we were just like eating with our hands like guacamole and then there was um there was like a salad and then underneath this like pot like inside this pot with a lid on it because th that was more sus to like lift the lid you know but there was like this really good potato dish I think I was the only one who ate it. Anyway, yeah, it was it open was season. We just yeah. fucking went for it, didn't we? They were all done eating. Really sorted us out. <laughs> I was so upset at first. Like, I was like, we're eating a fucking pineapple for dinner. And then there was like the, <laughs> the little baby infant at Delos. She would like open these like nuts and like 
you know, run around and like give them to people. I already thought that was the only food that we were gonna get. Yeah, was, like, I was like yeah. telepathically Six sending her messages to like come over and like more give nuts. us more nuts. <laughs> I was like, Sierra, not the chips, the nuts. <laughs> What have you been baking? <clears throat> On the boat? Yeah. Um, brownies, bread, chocolate cake, one pots, burgers, bean burgers. It's a different experience baking on the boat. You have to do everything in spoons and cups and improvise with your equipment and using the oven's different because it's just kind of set for one temperature and you don't quite know how it's going to cook but it's interesting, it's fun, <laughs> experimenting. Each day we were spending at least a few hours in the water. The sea here is fairly clear, although due to the trade winds there's an obvious issue with marine plastic. However, there's still a lot of life, especially on the edges of the reef. We saw rays and nurse sharks and spent most afternoons searching for lobsters and lionfish to eat. Beautiful sunset. Everyone's trying to catch our dinner. See what's going on underwater. The entire region is autonomous and governed by the Gunayala tribe. The community has a strong cultural identity. It's a matrilineal society where names, houses and assets are passed on through the females in each family. Women mostly control business and finance and gender fluidity is celebrated. Whilst men fish and farm, the women typically spend their time weaving molas, which are intricate tapestries representing abstract forms of sacred plants, animals and objects. Damn, you guys do have a lot on the back of your boat, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show me what you've done to that peanut butter jar? I just like ate it and it's like just really, I think I can do better though still. Let's have a look inside. She started on it and was just like, wait, I want to get this thing completely clean. Oh my God, you can see my hand like clearly through it. Yeah, it's, it's quite clean. It's not perfect though. Peanut butter's a hot commodity. We're down to our last tub of peanut butter. Oh my god, camera's really close to my face right now. Sorry, it's a wide angle lens. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> what do you want? I made some more bread, made another cake because the last one ended up on the floor. Gravity. Gravity happened. Did, did we throw it out? No, we made cake pop. <laughs> <laughs> We ate the floor cake. We ate the floor cake. Nothing gets wasted on the boat. <laughs> high, high gravity day yesterday. It was a high gravity day. Peanut butter cake pops was the... And the jalapenos as well. Oh yeah, jalapenos ended up on the floor. Nice, dropped all the jalapenos on the floor. <laughs> they also went <laughs> back into the out. jar. Yeah. Straight back in the jar, yeah. No way. So the next cake's in the oven. Hopefully it will last. And then we can do a little peanut butter. Practically should a be good. floating bakery at the moment. Yeah, floating bakery. Oh God, so yeah. Another loaf just rising here. Max, can you explain why like Darwin Sound over there would is like infinitely more seaworthy than like a catamaran like like Parley? Okay. Good question. I think that seaworthiness is a combination of three things. The first is the form stability, I guess, of the boat. How stable is the boat in the water? Like if it gets hit by a wave and like put on its side, like what's the writing moment gonna be? visualize what would happen if three meter wave smashed the Darwin sound on the beam and a three meter wave smashed the Parley Revival on the beam. Parley Revival is stable like to an extent but if it, if it gets pushed past a certain point then it's just going to capsize and be upside down. Whereas like Darwin sound it's like it can be literally smashed onto its side by a wave and it's always going to right back up mm. again because the keel. The second thing is like the ability of the boat to shed water. So like if you're in a big sea you're going to have waves just pounding over the boat and there's just pretty much constantly going to be like solid water on the deck 
like on a boat like Elixir or Darwin Sound, like you can fill the cockpit up with water and it's gonna drain out through these holes. In theory, like you can shut everything up. The boat could be almost completely submerged and then when it comes back up again, all the water's just gonna shed. Whereas again, with Parlay Revival, it's gonna be able to shed water, but it's got much more deck space. The place is just gonna be like affected way more by big walls of solid water smashing into it. And then the third thing is like buoyancy. The boat is super heavy, like if it's concrete or steel, you start to take on water, it's gonna sink pretty quickly. That doesn't really apply to the two of those. There's also like a load of other individual factors, just like this, the condition of the rig. If that's got really old rigging, or if it has really old rigging, then the rig's more likely to, to um, like fall down, or like the condition of the electrical system, or like the condition of the engine, or like the condition of the sails, like the condition of the hull and like the skin fittings, all of these things like contribute. So it's like- But what about just the shape? Like just the below. form stability. Yeah. Fuck knows. What do you think? <laughs> Long and thin or sh short and fat? I feel like short and fat. Another good analogy is with a small boat, as long as the hull is structurally sound enough, you can compare it to just like a wine bottle with a cork in. Almost at the mercy of the waves, but it's not going to sink. If you've got a big boat, it's like more likely to stand up to the waves as opposed to just go with the energy like a wine bottle would. Or just like a barrel in the water, something that just floats. Has that clarified anything for you, Emma? I think. I don't know. A new tin of mine, right? Nothing quite like a freshly opened tin of Marmite, is there? Marmite and honey. How do you think that would taste? I think it's just a waste of both. What if peanut butter has been giving us the shits? No, Honestly. peanut butter would never do that to us. Right, that's pretty good. <laughs> It's like, I'm done being consumed by- We quickly establish some kind of routine. Every few days, we moved to a new dreamy anchorage, cruising with our friends on board Calico Skies and Delos. It was cramped living with five people in such a small space, but thankfully everyone got along really well, and we all felt grateful to be in such a scenic environment. We managed to buy freshly grown vegetables, as well as fish and lobsters from locals who had passed through the anchorage on small boats. We found that we could exist here for very little. Apart from fish, vegetables and molars, there was actually very little to spend money on. Got lobsters for dinner. Yes. We could put him in a bag in the water. And we can cook him tomorrow. Or, or we'll keep him in a, in a bucket. Bro, bucket that's some serial killer shit. Wait, we should eat <laughs> him tonight, don't you think? We should just eat it. That's crazy. That was $13. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What are you trying to do? I'm trying to like blow it out. Nice. No. Peeling the lobster that we bought today from the nice fisherman who pulled up to the boat. They sold us six lobsters and a giant crab for $12. Got some lobster and crab with garlic butter sauce. What is this, carrot, cucumber, um, tomato, mustard, a bit of oil, lemon, garlic. And then coconut rice, fresh coconuts from mm. Little Island, thanks to Dom. <laughs> Big up Dom. Vino Blanco, courtesy of Klotz. Sponsor us. Fucking clean plate club. Except Emily, who always takes like a good 40 minutes longer than everyone. Oh yeah. She will be clean plate, clean plate club though. She's cleaning the lobster She's up. She's cleaning it. The lobster's gone. Y'all are just jealous. <laughs> How was it? Like, full restaurant quality. We go through these waves of like scrounging in the cupboards for tins and like, oh, what the fuck are we gonna make for dinner? And then like bringing a pineapple. Yeah, like that we had a beach gathering the other day and took a pineapple. That was our only food. And then um, and then today we have fucking coconut rice, lobster, nice like fresh salad. Satisfied? Very. <laughs> Tickety boo. <laughs> just the chocolate cake now. Yeah, just gonna finish off with some chocolate cake and then it's. Cooked two loaves of bread today, a chocolate <laughs> cake. <laughs> like seven shellfish. Yeah. What is the da and then Valero? Papaya. Bro, you're about to fucking fall in, I know it. <laughs> you don't have any valuables? No. Mira, ese para remar. 
Y mira, mira, ese para okay. dar la vuelta. ¿Viste? Sí, bueno. Ahora sí, ya. Listo, ¿Listo? eres libre. Sí, estoy libre. <risa> eres libre. What does it feel like? It's like super rolly. <risa> para right. ti es bueno ese bote, es grande. Sí. Sí, sí, sí. Uh. Da, dale la vuelta a, a, al remo. Ajá, sí. So there's a lobster coming towards me. Did you see those skills? Dale, no tengas miedo, dale. Bueno. Al a remo, el remo, mira, oh, ajá, ahora sí. Yeah. Tiene su agarradero ahí. I've done very little. We've just had come from a beautiful anchorage. Except, well, it was beautiful, but there was no breeze and it was it was hot. The last two days have been hot, so it's nice to be like slightly more exposed, have a nice bit of breeze. And um, yeah, now we're in Cocos Banderos. I guess it's like the cover picture for the guidebook or whatever. We're just surrounded by like three classic desert islands, basically. Yeah, I guess spend the next day here and then maybe go check out the mainland and check out one of the sort of larger local communities and settlements. Just keep moving around, there's a lot, a lot of islands to see. just out here on this uninhabited little island about to do a little search for some firewood to burn on our fire tonight and Dom's just over there having a stretch in the beautiful beautiful light pretty fucking nice <laughs> pretty sweet that light is pretty cool huh? yeah look at those two islands like up there oh yeah Most evenings, we'd head to a nearby island for sunset, make a fire from dried palm leaves and sit and talk for a few hours before heading back to the boat. It was refreshing to be so removed from civilization. We weren't busy, yet it felt like we were experiencing so much at the same time. And there was something very special about being able to share that with a group of close friends. Oh, he's playing guitar. <laughs> Yet yeah, eventually our dreamlike existence came to an end and we sailed to a small nearby town in order to hunt down a water taxi for Emily. So I would say like the biggest thing for me like the past two months actually wasn't like boat life per se. It was like spending every waking minute with these like two to three people and just like doing everything with them and it's been like really fun. What I'm like not necessarily excited about, but what like the next big change and like leaving Elixir, it's gonna be moving about the world as my own single person, you know, like being able to like choose like, oh, I'll like do this now or like I won't do this or like I'll hang out with these people versus everything being like a group decision, like a fucking consensus. Today I was like, I want to eat a cookie. Like, does the council agree? You know, <laughs> and everyone was like, yes, let's have the cookie. <laughs> I don't know, it's been like an amazing time. Like obviously like me, like crossing paths with y'all like made my fucking time in Boca is like amazing. And I'm like so grateful. And just for like, you know, being able to stay on the boat and like coming to San Blas, like it's been really fucking incredible. Thanks for watching another one of our videos. We hope you're enjoying the updates. If you want to stay posted, then head over to our channel and click subscribe. Also, leave a comment.
comment. We'd love to hear what you have to say. See you next time.